Central Bank of Nigeria says banks will consider sustainable principles before lending. Nigerian Investment Promotion Council remits 5.3 billion naira into Consolidated Revenue Fund. $40 billion investment needed for Nigeria's gas plan. Global food prices surge again, says FAO. Details of this and more on Business Express on the network service of the NTA. And we are reaching you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. Join us on the business side of life and we start by telling you that the federal government has assured United Kingdom companies operated in Nigeria of its support in ensuring that they thrive even in the face of dwindling foreign exchange earnings, promising to continue creating the enabling environment for them to carry out their businesses unhindered. This is coming on the heels of request for more foreign exchange for companies to pay their lenders, maintain machines, and continue in business. Minister of Industry, Trade, and Investment, Adini Adebayo, and the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Godwin Emefele, at an interactive session with UK business team in Abuja on Thursday, noted that the government was doing everything to ensure investors in the Nigerian economy get the necessary support to grow their companies. Adebayo said the growth of these companies would mean more money for the Nigerian government and build more infrastructure and also create jobs for the team in Nigerian youth. It is my belief that a continuous collaboration of this type between the Central Bank of Nigeria and my ministry will bring about tremendous changes in the Nigerian business environment that will impact positively on the economy of our great nation. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, says the Nigerian oil and gas industry will require at least $40 billion in direct investment in basic infrastructure to achieve the federal government's much-talked-about decade of gas. The NNPC, while noting that it is targeting about 7.4 billion cubic feet to 10 billion cubic feet of gas, in the next couple of years, compared to its current 1.6 BCF supply capacity, added that the corporation expects to grow about 10 gas-based industries as it works towards the 10-year target. It further said the figure of the quantum of funds needed is based on the submissions NNPC has received from potential investors. About 39 thermal power plants were being targeted as opposed to the current 33. Gold prices languish near two-week lows on Friday and looked set for their worst week in three months after robust U.S. economic data busted the dollar and boosted the dollar and the bound yields. How are the commodities trading?
Well, oil prices made a rebound early this week, rising to levels last seen two years ago. As demand continues to increase, the federal government had adopted a conservative crude oil price and production benchmark of $40 per barrel, in addition to 1.85 million barrels per day in the year 2021 budget following the COVID-19 induced fall in oil prices. However, rising demands are also sending prices up. Balazaka joins me from Lagos to examine how this increase in global oil prices will be affecting you and I, as well as the cost Nigeria. You're welcome yes, to Business Express. Yes, I can Experts. hear you. Thank you. You're welcome to Business Express. Well, to start with, the global Thank oil you. prices, what are the push and pull factors? Well, uh, as we speak right now, uh, you, you, you know that uh, in 2020, because of the pandemic, activities went down generally, and uh, we didn't have uh, energy demands. So now that there is stabilization and different countries have come up with strategies of how to handle the, the pandemic, there is a need to ramp up activities. And because of the need to ramp up activities, that was why we will continue to see a demand for energy. And to that extent, whether we are experiencing winter or summer, there will be high demand for energy. And that is one of the principal reasons why you will be seeing high demand for uh, crude oil and, and gas in the international and local markets. Is that also evident to the fact that economies are actually not just gradually recovering, but recovering a kind of faster than expected? You are 100% uh, correct. Because like we said last year, a lot of the economies almost found themselves on, on a standstill because of uh, the pandemic. But now that they are recovering, they need to ramp up seriously. And to that extent, they will require so much energy. Okay, then, how would this trend play out, considering the position of OPEC and its allies to maintain carbs in production with the IEA predictions already going south? Uh, to some extent, uh, uh, OPEC and her friends will need to, to make some adjustment because a lot of companies and economies and countries are lagging behind and they need to play what we call a catch up. And that was why we said there is a ramping up of activities. So to that extent, there will be a need for high demand. And in the process of high demand, apart from OPEC and her friends, even shell producers will find the price attractive. And if they find this price attractive to some extent they will want to start producing that may eventually want to glut the market and bring down the prices okay let's come back home and uh, take a look at the nigeria's budget what does this translate to oh for the nigeria's budget uh this is something i can best describe as excellent because I am somebody who has always recommended or suggested that every time we come up with our benchmark price for crude oil, there should be a differential of a minimum of $15 per barrel between our own benchmark price, uh, I mean budget benchmark price, and uh, the global price. And the reasons for that is whenever there is a drop, we should not suffer shocks and for that deficit. But from what is happening, our benchmark price was uh, $40 per barrel. And now we have seen uh, almost $70 per barrel, which is almost an increase of 75%. Yeah. That is excellent for Nigeria. It will help us to also bridge uh, some of our debt concerns and reduce our deficit. Okay, be that as it may, how would this increase affect local energy production and possibly the consumption? No, in terms of local consumption, that, that we may not see the effect much. The reason is because we have always been relying on imports for petrol, diesel, kerosene, and the rest. 
And because the value of our Naira has also gone down due to devaluation and uh, depreciation, we may not see much effect. But my encouragement and recommendation to government this time around is this. Regardless of the blackmail, regardless of the previous corruptions that we have been experiencing with our refineries, please, this time around, let us make sure our refineries work. If our refineries work, then on the local scene, we will be refining and be self-sufficient. And on the international scene, we will be selling crude oil at higher prices and we'll be making good money. The only reason why we were suffering before was because we were selling at good prices, but we were also importing at higher prices. So this time around, let us close our ears and please maintain our refineries. Because at the rate our Naira is sinking, if we keep importing distillates from outside, we wouldn't really enjoy the benefits of these high prices. Okay, what do you think the policy direction from now should be like? Well, we have always known that uh, uh, we, we came up with uh, deregulation, which was uh, import focus dependent. And you cannot have an import focus dependent deregulation on a citizen of close to 200 million. And when you have a weak currency and high inflation. So the best thing is, let us look inwards. Let us domesticate inwards. Get the crude oil from the wellheads within Nigeria in Naira. Refine them within Nigeria in Naira. Sell them to Nigerians in Naira. Generate our Naira and free ourselves from exchange rate pressures that has always eaten up into our foreign exchange and was also causing so much controversy about subsidy concerns. Well, it is evident that the, the rise in price of crude oil would not necessarily reflect on the pump price in Nigeria. Possibly, if there's going to be any reflection, it might just be an increase in pump price. But thank God the Minister of State for Petroleum has promised us that in this month of June, there won't be increase. But beyond June, what do you see happening? Well, beyond June, I will not be surprised if the price of uh, the pump price is increased. But we have all agreed that it, it has been happening and will continue to happen because our deregulation was import focus dependent. Now that the government has decided to have a rethink, and we have all agreed that the best thing to do is to internally refine and fix our refineries, that will be better. Because a population of 200 million is just too huge and too large to, re to depend on imports for products, even if it is just toothpick or pure water. When you have a population of 200 million, it's just too large for you not to internally domesticate and produce inside or internally. Okay, still talking about the price of crude oil on the global market. Do you see an increase? Do you see consistency in an increase? I, I, will cont I expect to see further increase, like I said, regardless of whether we are experiencing summer or winter. Because during the coronavirus or during the pandemic, especially in 2020, so many economies had and countries had a setback. So they are basically playing what we call catch up. And when you are playing catch up, you will need to ramp up production. And in your ramping up production, you will require energy. And one, some of, among the major, many sources of energy will be this crude oil and gas. So to some extent, it will continue. But with time, it will relatively stabilize because when it gets too high again, those who are shell producers may glut the market and frustrate OPEC and her friends led by Russia. And that may not be good for Nigeria and the OPEC cartel. Thank you so very much, Mr. Balazaka, for sharing your insights with us at this particular point in time. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Seven years of continued central bank interventions under the leadership of Godwin Emefele as CBN governor has continued to positively impact on the Nigerian economy. Musa Abubakar reports that the focus of these interventions will further develop and strengthen the MSME sector and promote food security as well as industrialization.
Moku Christiana is a local fashion designer who needed money to expand her business. Then came the agribusiness small and medium enterprise investment scheme by the Central Bank of Nigeria, which she and many applied and got. Well, when I got the loan, I've been able to get more machines and I was even able to, I was able to move out of the house. I was able to get two, mach um, two shops for myself and that's been going on smoothly and more easier. Since I got the, the empowerment, it has uh, improved tremendously. It has improved my livelihood, my means of livelihood. The, the loan I improved my livelihood from this perspective, perspective of been spending 1,000 naira before. So after math of the uh, collection, then to the glory of God, I've been able to spend nothing less than 10, 20,000 naira as for me. It's the same story for many beneficiaries under the various central bank interventions which are single digit interest rate. Uh, I think say it will work. So but when I apply and I see say uh, the thing called it that work and I, I got the fund, they give me four hundred and twenty-five thousand. And we're actually using local machines and we have little industrial machines that we were using. But after I hasted the loan, we were able to acquire more industrial machines and that makes our work faster. The agricultural sector is also getting attention with the Anko Borrower Scheme focusing on reviving production of major crops such as rice and cotton amongst many farm produce. Nigeria will get even more aggressive, more aggressive to see to it that food and, and or any or all food items that can be produced in Nigeria and consumed in Nigeria that are currently being imported into Nigeria that we would go through our records and as once we are we convince ourselves that these products can be produced in Nigeria we will place them on the FX restriction list. While the latest GDP figure shows the country is making headway in recovering from the COVID-19 induced recession, continued interventions by the central bank is said to be critical in getting the economy on the path of growth and diversification. Still on the central bank, the central bank is not only concerned about the banking hall, but the environment in which they operate. A beautification exercise therefore is flagged off, that is, tree planting to celebrate the 2021 World Environment Day. Musa Abubakar again reports that the CBN Governor Godwin Emefele reminds financial institutions to embrace sustainable banking to achieve environmental sustainability. A day like this reminds us that we need to make sure that we remove all anything that is creating pollution in our environment. And I'm sure that we all know about the need globally for us to go green and in an attempt to go green also means that our ecosystem we must keep it alive to make sure that everything remains green so it's on this basis that even in the banking industry we have made sure that uh, lending lending practices must also take into consideration our environment to be sure that sustainable banking principles are taken into account the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning is affirming commitment to staff well-being. Permanent Secretary Special Duties to the Ministry, Aliu Shinkafi, who represented the Minister at the opening of an eye clinic at the Treasury House, said it is another public-private partnership success story. Lea Katungba Batunde reports. <laughs> The most important or vulnerable areas of the human being is the back because they sit for too long. The next thing is the eyes because they strain it. So with this, I think it's a laudable innovation and I'm so happy and proud of you. This is the idea behind the setting up of the facility. Accountants by profession have longer sitting hours at work and one organ that gets trained the most is the eye. This clinic gives the public servants affordable eye care at close range. It's going to increase productivity, of course, if we are checking our eyes, uh, you know, as, as when do, before any problem, uh, you know, cross up, you are already aware and you can take care of that before it gets worse. This is first to avail the Treasury staff this facility first, 
but uh, members of the families of the Treasury officers, and by extension, uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance, you know, and the Ministry of Finance, and all the permanent secretaries and staff of the ministry as a whole. Diagnosis here is seamless, with minimal contacts in line with COVID-19 protocols. What we recommend in the Ophthalmocal Society of Nigeria is that everybody should have their eyes examined at least once a year. During that uh, one yearly examination, uh, it will be determined whether you have a problem that will necessitate more frequent uh, intervention. It is expected that the bulk of eye concerns at the workplace will be diagnosed and treated in the clinic. The Association of Bureau's Exchange Operators says it will commence what it called Operation No Street Trading to stop the hawking of foreign exchange by BDC operators. The president, Abkan Amin Ogwadebe, said this is part of resolutions made at the meeting of the operators in Lagos, while encouraging all operators to collaborate in bringing down the forex rates in the market, street trading by Bureau de Change should be discouraged and banned. Still talking currency, the dollar was perched near multi-week highs on Friday, basking in the biggest gains in about a month after robust jobs data threw investors' focus on the strength of the U.S. recovery and on the possibility of it driving policy tightening. And global stocks steady to end the week as U.S. recovery sparks federal tampering fears. Nekaoko has a summary of the market activities. Stocks across the globe struggle for direction this Friday on U.S. jobs data. Asian markets were mixed in the day as Reserve Bank of India held steady on interest rates. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index closed 0.17% lower at 28,918.10. The Shanghai Composite rose 0.19% while in Japan the Nikkei 225 fell 0.40% to close at 28,941 in Europe, stocks were also mixed as investors looked ahead to key U.S. jobs reports. Germany's DAX was up by 0.06%, London's FTSE depreciated by 0.07%, and CAC 40 of France 0.43%. U.S. indices were little changed in early Friday trades. Dow Jones Industrial Average dipped 38 points. S&P 500 was unchanged, while the Nasdaq 100 was flat. Markets in Africa followed similar sentiments in Asia and Europe by trading mixed. Tunisia's Tunidex advanced 0.24%, South Africa's JSE Africa Top 40 0.22%, and Ghana's GSE Composite 0.14%, while Kenya's Nairobi All Share and Namibia Overall Index were the relative underperformers. That's global market. Um, Nekaoko. It's back to Benin. Thank you, Neka. And with that, we end this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on the NTA's channel. You can also communicate with us on Twitter and the handle is NTA News Now. Don't forget to use the hashtag. It's BizX. Business Express returns on Monday at 3 p.m. I am Benny Adams saying stay safe.